Today, the Israeli government said that it was claiming 800 hectares of land in the West Bank as state land. This announcement came at the same time that U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was visiting Israel to convince them not to invade Rafah, which failed. The U.S. House approved a $1.2 trillion package of about 1,012 pages and now moves the bill to a vote by Senate. This vote was pushed to avoid the void a shutdown deadline for tomorrow at 12.01 a.m. Spending package is extensive, but among other things, it will give $200 million for a new FBI headquarters in Maryland, continue to prohibit funding for UNRWA in Palestine through March 2025, fund 2,000 new Border Patrol agents. This resulted in Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene filing a motion for the removal of Speaker Mike Johnson, so she will not force an immediate vote ahead of the two-week recess. The United States asked Ukraine not to target Russia's energy infrastructure with drone strikes, fearing the rising cost of global oil. This follows yesterday where Russia fired 60 kamikaze drones and 90 missiles, according to Ukrainian officials. They focused on hitting Ukraine's energy infrastructure and caused blackouts in the region. These actions follow the Kremlin announcing that it was in a state of war today, no longer a special military operation, signaling an escalation in conflict provisions. The actual Dnipro hydroelectric dam caused the nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia to lose power for several hours, escalating concerns for a nuclear accident. In another attempt at ceasefire in Gaza, the U.S. resolution in the U.N. Security Council was vetoed by permanent members Russia and China, ending the vote. U.S. Envoy to the U.N., Linda Thomas-Greenfield, expressed frustration despite vetoing three ceasefire resolutions in the past few months. She also warned that the U.S. would veto the next draft resolution that demands ceasefire.